What three baits should you be using in the month of February? That's what we're going to talk about right now. So if you like this kind of content, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wouldn't, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button too. It does help the channel. Here, it's February. Finally, we are going to see a lot of places in the country are going to start to become pre-spawn fishing. The three lures I have today are going to be more for reaction strikes. Now, I'm not sitting here saying I'm the be-all end-all. I'm going to give you options that I've researched and that I've used over the years that hopefully will help you catch more fish. Are they it? No, you can use almost anything and fool fish. You just have to have the confidence in it and you just have to fish it. The middle of the country is still really cold. Even down here in Florida, while I thought we'd have the spawn in January, we're slowly finding out that the fish haven't spawned yet, but the big fish are here. So these baits are great down here too, but the middle of the country and places where you can find open water, these three baits are gonna help you catch more fish. So we have to remember the, the water is still very cold. So the fish are lethargic. They're gonna look for a reaction bite. They're not gonna chase down baits. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we fish the back of a creek or if you have a place that has a dark patches where the sun will warm up that water just a little bit warmer, bass will be there. This is also time we need to slow down our retrieval. They're not, again, they're not chasing stuff down. So we need to be slow, methodical, and just use the right baits that they're looking for. I have to throw this in there. If you get a bite, you need to remember the cadence that you're fishing, or the cadence of the speed that you're fishing that lure. That is crucial right now. Just recently I went fishing with my buddy and he took me to a spot on a golf course and, and I said to him, once you catch that first fish, remember that speed, because after that, you're gonna, you're gonna crush him. And in this case, Quan beat me 10 to five, I think, or maybe 12 to five. And he just flat out annihilated me. And I guess I needed a little taste of humble pie. And my buddy Quan really served it up, served up the whole pie to me. During this month, there's a couple things we need to do. Not only do we need to slow down, we need to also downsize our baits. This is a time when we're not seeing giant shad we're gonna see smaller shad. So the target is, is to downsize our bait so that we have a more compact lure. Also, and this is gonna be one, we're gonna trim down a lot of our jigs if you're using a jig, because a jig is a great bait to use this time of year. My first bait though is a spinner bait, and I'm using a double Colorado spinner bait. You can see that right there. Now the reason I'm using a double, double Colorado is I want the vibration that the the spinnerbait puts out. That's what a double Colorado does. Where a willow puts out a little bit of flash, these put out flash, but they also put out a lot of thump and vibration. I want that vibration in the water. I want the bass to feel that the bait is coming towards them and they'll do a reaction strike. Now this is something I'm gonna cast and keep it down banks, but I'm also gonna look for grass and like I said, rocky areas or dark patches in, in the, as I'm scanning the water. Those are the areas that are gonna keep and hold the fish more. Also those back creeks, if you find a deeper area, just slow rolling that spinner bait as it comes towards the boat or towards the bank is gonna be really beneficial and you'll catch more fish. One of the things I also like to do is I will let this jig or this spinner bait go all the way to the bottom. Let it sit for a couple seconds and then slowly start reeling it in. I'll want it to bounce off the bottom and then slowly as it comes towards the bank or the boat, it'll start to get in that water column that I want. Water column is really important right now. Their fish are fishing or are eating things up. They're not looking down to eat right now. During these colder months, that's how they act. That's why we're getting reaction strikes. So my first bait, like I said, is a spinner bait and a little compact one. My second bait I think you should be using is a lipless crankbait. Now this is a Sabeel one from years ago that I still use quite a bit, but uh, the Thunderhawk one is really exceptional too. It'll sit on the, sit on the seafloor like this and as you bounce it, it will, it will uh, again sit nose down. The reason why I like a, uh, a, a lipless crankbait this time of year is that I want to cast it and not make it super fast. I'm not actually bouncing this off the bottom. I'm casting it and just letting it have that tight wobble as it comes towards where you're fishing and getting that motion. I want that 
little bit of action, but I want the size of the bait is crucial. This one's a little big. I would go a little bit smaller if I if I if I wasn't getting bites. But right now, lipless crankbait is going to get you reaction strikes, and that's what we want right now. So my third bait, I'm going to go into a little more depth of why I'm choosing this specific lure. If you know, I love chatterbaits. I love chatterbait fishing. I think that's probably my second strong point of fishing. I think a worm is really where I I'm the best at. In my for my fishing but after that it's chatterbait fishing and i have i've been meticulous about learning as much as i can about chatterbaits from talking to brett height to talking to other pros to learning all about each one and while i think the jackhammer is the king and the best one on the market that's not the one i think you should be fishing this month i think you're going to see a lot of people out there fishing chatterbaits and a lot of them are going to use the jackhammer because it's the best Here's what I think you should be using. I think you should be using the Strike King Thunder Cricket. And here is why I say that. The Thunder Cricket has a different pitch in the water. It's a little more silent. During the colder months or when the water is cooler, sound doesn't travel as far. So we're not looking for the sound of the bait for the first time on this chatterbait. We want something that's a little, that still gives us that vibration, that still has a little bit of that clicking, clacking noise, but we don't want to make it too loud. And as I said, I think there are going to be a lot of anglers using a chatterbait right now. And we want to differentiate, differentiate ourselves just a little bit. I think the, the Thunder Cricket and also the Stealth Blade from Z-Man would be perfect choices right now. You're going to get the vibration, you're going to get the action, and you're going to get bites. These are two baits, or these are baits that just fish well all year round. And I think right now, being a little bit different is key to catching more fish. So we talked about the chatterbait, we talked about the lipless crankbait, we talked about the spinnerbait, almost forgot it. You'll notice uh, there's a few things you can also use, your jigs, your uh, suspending jerk baits. Those baits are still gonna work. What you saw last month in the January episode of this still is gonna work in February, just because it's colder months. So hopefully you can get out there and catch more fish, and hopefully if you use these lures, you will catch more fish. I mean, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a pro. I just do tens of hundreds of hours researching things and then also fishing on myself so thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button make sure you comment below and tell me what you think are these the three baits you would use i want to know what three baits you would use again thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button remember take a kid fishing get your fish on i think i did this one take see y'all soon cheers